So we're back, and you guessed it, we're going to do output gaps again. And yeah, I'm not going to explain recessionary gaps and the graph, because you, are, you should know by now what they are. And yeah, we're going to go through the long run options, and the first way to fix a recessionary gap is the natural way, and that's by doing nothing. And natural way, what happens is the factor prices go down, uh, aggregate supply moves right, from AS1 to AS2, to AS2. Now let's just reflect this in our graph. And this will be AS2. And what happens is that, as you can see, the price has fallen. And when the price falls, uh, you know what happens to money demand and interest rate. They both fall as well. So money demand and interest rate falls. Now, in this video, we're going to add in something that we didn't before, and that is budget deficit. So BD equals to uh, G minus T Y plus I D. Okay, so we know that price fell, money demand fell, and uh, I, I fell as well. And we know that Y went up because we fixed the recessionary gap. So let's just reflect this. So Y increased and the interest rate decreased. So essentially what we're saying is that our total income increased and our interest rate decreased. So then um, we, don't have to that, we don't have to pay that much interest. So essentially our direction of the budget deficit, now this is a ch uh, something new that we haven't seen yet, is that when our income uh, rises and our and we have we don't have to pay as much interest as before our interest rate fell then our budget deficit also falls and this when this happens we have a downward pressure on debt a downward pressure on debt and this can be seen uh, let me just go back to some of our notes from the previous video. Remember, BD goes down, downward pressure on debt. That is exactly what happened in this case. Now, we're going to go through uh, increasing spending. And we increase spending by doing the expansionary fiscal policy. Now, we know that in the expansionary fiscal policy, uh, the government spending goes up. One of two things happen. The, the government spending goes up or the tax rate falls. So these two things happened. And by doing this, by doing this, by having our government spending go up and our tax rate falling, our aggregate demand uh, moves right. Our demand moves right from 81 to 82. And I guess I should really make this a red color. And yeah, this is nothing new. We have been through this before, so aggregate demand moves uh, right to 82. Oh boy. And let's continue. So aggregate demand moves right from, uh, from moves to the right, and we see that the price has risen, the price rises, and immediately we know what happens to the interest rate and the money demand. They also rise. And now there are two cases we must consider. Uh, when we must consider uh, when government spends and when uh, when the tax rate uh, falls. So let's go through the government spending first. So government spending increases. So what does this do to the budget deficit? The budget deficit. So budget deficit is G minus T Y plus I D or I big D. So uh, we know that uh, we know that our interest, our interest increased and of course we fixed a recessionary gap so our Y also increased. And and we know that government increased their spending so their G increased. And we know that when G increases increases and why increases the effects on uh, the budget deficit is uncertain and this can go back this 
relates back to something I did in the past video and uh, it relates back to these examples that I did or more example this these examples we see that without numbers uh, without numbers of uh, how much they changed we can, we're uncertain of how of which direction the budget deficit actually took so it's because we don't have numbers that we are uncertain of uh, what kind of effects uh, the, the government increase and the total income increase has on the budget deficit. So I'm just telling you here that uh, that the budget deficit is uh, uncertain. Now how about when tax decreases? When tax decreases, what happens to the budget deficit then? So let's just rewrite our formula. So essentially what, I, what I'm saying is uh, we focus on G and Y. Uh, by adding on the by adding on the the interest on the debt and the on the public debt, uh, it doesn't really change the concept. It doesn't really change the fact that uh, this calculation this still exists, and that uh, without knowing the numbers for the changes, we cannot find uh, the direction of the but of the budget deficit and the direction of uh, which the budget deficit takes. So that's why it's uncertain, and back to our tax part so this is the formula again uh, we know that y increased and i increased now we know that tax decreased so what effect does this have on budget deficit if you guess that it's uncertain you're right because it's much for the same reason that uh, we had for government and with the because without knowing the numbers we won't know which direction budget deficit took and that's why we call it uncertain. Now the last part of our analysis of the recessionary gap we're gonna do expansionary monetary policy and that is when uh, I falls or MS rises. MS rises and this takes the same direction for Aggregate demand, aggregate demand moves right to fix the recessionary gap, 81 to 82, which I won't draw because we already drew it for the fiscal policy. And the bank follows the EMP, so I falls and Y increases because we fixed the, the recessionary gap. And the reaction to this is that, uh, that uh, I takes a different for the reaction, I takes the the different reaction. It's an opposing reaction to the bank's uh to the bank's stated interest rate. So when the bank states that interest rate falls, then the reaction would be that interest rate rises. And we went through the this in uh, one of my past videos of output gaps. There's a lot of videos on output gaps, and why falls. So I'm not really gonna go into detail. Just look through my past videos because I really went more in depth. For that but I'm trying to save time here so we know that the interest rate falls the banks uh, the banks actions are much are always stronger than the reaction and you can check my other videos to look back at it if you forgot and Y moves from Y to Y star and then uh, yeah the new thing we have to focus on is the change in depth which is equal to our budget deficit and that is equal to that is equal to G minus TY plus ID and we know from here that that uh, Y has risen that the overall for the overall effect Y has increased and the interest rate has decreased and uh, this means that this is pretty much the same thing as uh, the natural occurrence for the budget deficit. So then there's downward pressure on debt and the change in debt falls. And there's downward pressure on debt. So we have more total debt and the interest that we have to pay back is less uh, than before. So there's downward pressure on debt, and that's the overall reaction. That's the overall effects 
uh, for the for the expansionary monetary policy. And I will end the video here. Thanks for uh, listening and please rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember to look back on my past videos to give you a clear refresher on uh, on the output gaps. All we really did here is we just included the budget deficit. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. And lastly, thank.